Coming up today on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast, Trent Condon alongside LaShawn Daniels. We take a look back as Iowa gets their eighth win of the year in the Music City Bowl as they knock off Kentucky. 21-0, a little bit of offense, a whole lot of defense, and a look towards the future of Iowa football. Iowa basketball, an 0-3 start in the Big Ten. We'll talk about that. And, of course, the biggest story of the sports world today as we react to DeMar Hamlin and uh, that devastating injury last night. All coming up today on Locked On Hawkeyes. Our Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. He's LaShawn Daniels. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen each and every day. We're available wherever you get podcasts, and you can also see us on YouTube. While you're there, hit that subscribe button, your podcasters, five-star reviews. That's what we're looking for as we work to get in front of more Hawkeye fans. A reaction podcast here today. Look back at what we saw as Iowa gets the bull win, and uh, with it, they get ready for the offseason. It feels like a very important one. LaShawn, good to catch up with you again. Hope the new year and holidays went incredibly well for you. And we're ready to roll once again here, talking Hawkeyes, and the offseason is upon us. How you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Now, like, for us football guys, like, this part of the year is the most boring part of the season for us, right? I mean, we got it's such a long, long time uh, until the guys are back on the field again. Um, but um, there's lots going on and a bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, no doubt about it. And obviously this program looking towards the future. I, I want to start right in the post game and seeing coach Ferentz up there and the emotion. Now Kirk's an emotional guy. He was an emotional guy when you played for him. He's been an emotional guy you know, throughout his whole tenure. That is just a part of him. I, I had a moment and it was before we heard the news of Jack Campbell's grandfather's father's passing. I think that probably had something to do with it as well. Just the emotion you know, of, of uh, what are your players losing a grandparent in that fashion, just devastating in that. But and seeing his emotion and seeing the tears that come out when he talks about certain guys and he talks about this team and he talks about leadership and, and all those things, that quality for a coach. I, I remember Dick Vermeil. You know, he was a very emotional guy as a head football coach. And uh, there's some old school line of thinking that, no, there, there's no room. You know, the, the adage from... Uh, what is it uh, with, with uh, Tom Hanks? There's no crying in baseball, right? There's no crying in football, but there's crying when it comes to Kirk Ferris. What's it like playing for a guy that really wears his emotions on his sleeve? And it's not like he's a softie, right? I mean, he's a tough guy, but he also has that emotional aspect. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Honestly, I think it's a great thing to have uh, a coach that has emotion to him, that has like a human side to him right not just kind of just a, a business 24 7 uh, a guy that understands the ability to be able to obviously separate business and football stuff and as well as uh life moments and exciting things that are happening um i mean it, it, it really is great like i mean like when i came back uh when i was the honorary captain uh me and coach parents we didn't we talked a bunch like a bunch about football but most of the time of our conversations had nothing to do with football or anything like that. It was just about uh, how I was doing, how my family's doing, uh, how my parents are, James, uh, siblings, all of that. I like he's a guy that um, has a bunch of emotion, cares deeply about his players. And when we're there on the team, you know, you, you felt that kind of energy, you felt that from him. And that's part of the reason why, a bunch of us, we, we play so hard for Coach Ferentz because of how much he gives back to, to us. You see that coming out. So those emotional moments. You guys are young college kids, right? You're going through there. <laughs> for the times, all right, here comes Coach again. Here comes the waterworks. I mean, were those times or were, were you just so invested that, that it hit you too? It, it hit you in those emotions and uh, tearing up, welling up, whatever it may be. But that really hit you guys too. What was it like when one of those moments would come for you as a player. Uh, you know, we always got hyped. We always got hyped about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, like we loved uh, those moments. I mean, 
uh, one I always think of is when uh, we beat Michigan at home in 2016 and, you know, we get in the locker room and uh, he's all emotional. I see we're all jacked up and, you know, he's like talking to us after the game, starts crying and then we all get hyped and we just like start, uh, you know, piling on top of him and stuff. And, um, <laughs> you know, like those are like those are the moments that uh, you really live for. Right. Like you can't uh, like you can't fake that stuff. Uh, those are real life moments that stick with you kind of forever and things that you never forget. And it's a big part of the reason why that Iowa football family is just so close because of Coach Ferentz and how he's operated his program um, and his, through his entire tenure and just how much he, he cares about, um, you know, his, his players. I did have the moment. And I wonder if it's popped into your minds and, and former players. He's been there 24 years. You know, th this has been a trying period going back to 2020, the summer of 2020. And we've talked about that a lot and the program and some of the changes that needed to be made, uh, that aspect of it. And then bouncing back. And last year, getting to the Big Ten championship game. This year, a dif disappointing year, certainly for what was expected coming into the year, the way the regular season came to a close. And, and just the thought of when he's going to be ready to hang it up. You know, he's got a difficult decision here. Is he going to make a staffing change in the offensive side? Is he going to have to either reassign or outright fire his son? I mean, reevaluating it. And is that an aspect that he can go through? And I just had this, this moment where I said, is, is this Kirk saying goodbye? Is this him in that moment knowing that this is going to be it? And all of a sudden, later this week, we're going to get the press release. Of, there's a press conference coming in and something like that because it can happen at any time. Now, he's in good shape. He, he works incredibly hard. He keeps himself together on the physical aspect of it. He can still go a very long time, but in the changing environment of college football, if maybe he hits that spot. So it, it was just a moment. I certainly am hopeful that that is not going to be the case, but it's something you always have to think about because at any moment, you know, very well could be the end. He could make the decision to walk away and what he's accomplished here. It's going to happen at some point. I mean, he's not going to coach forever. We we know that, but it just, I had that aspect. I wonder that ever crossed your mind as you saw him up there. Or is it, oh, that's just coach being coach. Uh, a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, I feel like as he, as each year goes by, I feel like I see, obviously he's getting closer and closer to retirement. Like one of these days you're going to finish the season and Coach parents is going to announce that I see that he's retiring. Um, from coaching, um, and it's gonna happen. But I know I see a bunch of it right now. It's just him being, uh, him being coach. And let's see, they had a bunch of tough times uh, this year. Um, a lot of highs and a lot of lows uh, this football season. Um, obviously, um, media and fans coming after coaches and players and things like that. And um, just it, it was probably a bunch of just the way he felt his the team um, responded and just stuck together um, and didn't uh, bail on each other, didn't throw anyone under the bus, just just stayed as a tight-knit group. And, um, you know, when you see uh, your seniors finish out um, the season in their last football game and, and they finish it out strong and they finish it out with the win and they all playing well, like that's like that's something that I see, I know for a fact brings Coach Ferentz joy and I see got him really emotional about it. So, um, let's see if part is, is, yeah, him being coach. Um, but obviously he knows that these, these times are, are, are running out and he's going to eventually get to his final senior class, um, at Iowa football. And I'm sure he's just trying to take it all in each year. So. Well, we're going to talk about the future of this program. Certainly it's been some good news in the transfer portal. Cade McNamara comes in, Eric all from Michigan. We'll get both those guys. Seth Anderson, Flipper Anderson's son, he's going to be out there playing for the Hawkeyes next year. An addition at the wide receiver group. That is certainly important, but I'm going to dive into the scheme a little bit. Also take a look back at that game, talk more about it. And of course, a whole lot more going on in the world of sports that we're going to get into here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Stay right there. We're back with more in a moment. Today's episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast is brought to you by LinkedIn. As a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more effectively and efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences 
to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs help you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify those most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Trent Cotton alongside LaShawn Daniels back with you again here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. See us on YouTube. You can see, of course, the cool background that LaShawn's got there. He's got his jersey <laughs> hanging up there. He's got the perfect 15 and 0 uh, 2015 season behind him. Uh, the stories from the Cedar Rapids Gazette. How great that was. Hey, did you read newspapers when you were in college? You know, Kirk, Kirk still talks about newspapers. I wonder today <laughs> if anybody did. We're talking, you know, going back six, seven years ago. I I grew up a huge newspaper guy, and I don't read newspapers anymore. I read things online all the time. Don't have it delivered to my house. Were you a newspaper guy back then? Are you today, or are you, uh, you uh, new school? No. So, actually, I never really was a newspaper guy. I mean, and when I was at Iowa, if, like, I saw myself, like, on the, news, on the newspaper, at least yeah. I grabbed it, sure. uh, took it, and, um, you know, I got them They're somewhere around my house somewhere. Uh <laughs> But uh, no, I never really read them. Um, I usually got most of everything that I read either um, by seeing articles on Twitter or Google or so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but I did deliver newspapers like when oh, I was really? younger. Yeah, like that was like my first. I was like my first job, so to speak. Okay. I would just ride my bike, had my little bag with the newspapers in it, and <laughs> really riding down, tossing them to to the houses. Um, but I never read them. Never read them. Um, uh, but yeah, I was never really a newspaper guy. I checked it out whenever I was in it. Obviously, high school, they post the stats and stuff. Saturday newspaper, you check that out, see if they have any stories on you or whatever. But yeah, no, never really, never really read them too much. So, what was your, what was the newspaper? I mean, was there a local newspaper? Was it a Youngstown's paper? What, what was it? Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was just a local, local okay. one. Yeah, it was a local newspaper. Um, uh that people got uh i don't even remember how much i got paid for it it was not a lot <laughs> it was not a lot of money <laughs> but, i remember when I, said the same thing and i'm like that's it and like <laughs> and get up early i'm like that sounds terrible <laughs> i was well, i was desperate desperate oh, for, yeah. desperate for some money so you get a couple of bucks together absolutely absolutely yep. I, my, my first jobs i worked uh at a car wash cleaning out the bays I got like okay. a buck for a bay, every bay that I clean. So I go in there and clean six bays, get six bucks. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is great. And looking back on an hourly rate, that wasn't exactly real good. <laughs> and I worked at our mini golf course in my hometown. And that was the other one uh, that I did before. Got a little bit older. But let's get into this Iowa football team. What we saw, first of all, on Saturday. Defense, a couple of scores there. But I want to start with Joe Labus. I mean, he, he looked okay. I, mm -hmm. Better maybe than I even I anticipated. You can see the game plan. Early on, I, I like the way that they scheme things up. Saw a lot of motion and then got the lead, got a pick six, got another pick six, and then the lockbox came out and it was a very simplified game plan there. But initially, those scripted plays, they look pretty good for the Iowa offense. Yeah, yeah. Early on, I mean, really that first drive went, was really moving it right down the field. Um, with some success. I see it ended up turning it over on downs. Um, but... There was some encouragement. There were some encouraging things. See, you saw the type of ability that that Lewis has at the quarterback position with his with his legs. I saw they tried to run like a quarterback draw with him, and he got yeah. rocked <laughs> on one play. <laughs> um, but we know that that you know that's, that's that's part of his game, and it was exciting to see the game plan that they had early on for him, and that he was making some plays, made a couple of throws, um, and then it was. Great to see them put together an uh, offensive touchdown drive, um, which was great, led by by the tight ends. Um, but yeah, obviously it wasn't it wasn't too exciting from the <laughs> offensive side of the football. Um, they did what they had to do to get done. Obviously, there's a bunch of 
things that are going to have to change moving forward. Um, because it was again, thankfully that it was that it was K- Kentucky um, that I was going against, and not a team that is much better offensively that can put up more consistent points and um, things like that. But overall, um, I can't say I'm too upset because again, guy hasn't really played any football, um, really getting his first action, and you know getting out there and was able to provide a touchdown and you know basically not make any big mistakes um, to cost. I would have the football game. So solid at the very mm-hmm. least. And you feel if he is going to stick around. We saw earlier today Carson May made his announcement that he has entered the transfer portal. We thought maybe we were going to see some of him turn out to be Joe Labus the whole time uh, at the quarterback spot. But first of all, with Cade McNamara coming off the injury, he says he's going to, you know, do a few things in the spring, but he's not going to be a full go. Joe Labus better be ready to go. I mean, he's going to be throwing a lot yeah. of footballs because. Are there any other quarterbacks right now on the roster? So it's going to be him out there chucking around <laughs> out throughout spring and, and getting all the reps with the ones, the twos, the threes. He's going to be out there uh, doing his thing. But if he's fine, you know, knowing that he's going to sit next year, it's going to be McNamara's job and, and sit and wait and maybe bide his time until he's a senior and get that opportunity. Uh, it's it's going to be there for him. But, boy, that's got to be tough, too, you know, knowing that you're going to sit that long. And especially, as we know, at the quarterback position, just the difficult nature of saying, all right, I got my start. I got my feet wet finally. I look pretty good there. And now I got to sit for two years. That, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, it, it's it's tough. Um, it's it's really tough because, I mean, it's part of the reason why a bunch of quarterbacks enter the transfer portal to begin with because they're like, man, like, there's no way like I can just sit, you know, two, three years behind the guy and not even be guaranteed that I'm even going to get a chance to play when I get to that point. It's like, I got to do what's best for me. I want to play football. I want to get an opportunity to have success at the college football level to possibly give me an opportunity to play at the next level. Cause I know a bunch of these guys, that's what they want to do. Um, but you also have to look at it from a mindset like, okay, if I do enter the transfer portal, there's also other quarterbacks that are entering the transfer portal. And now instead of competing against, you know, maybe two guys, now I'm competing against, you know, 50. Yeah, hundred. Um, and you know, there's there's no guarantees when you go to another place that you're going to be comfortable, that you're going to fit their style of offense, um, and so on and so forth. So, um, who knows what what Joey will do? Uh, obviously, yeah, as you said, Carson decided to enter the transfer portal. I can't necessarily blame him, especially having quarterback commits that are coming in as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm if I'm Joey, like I'm looking at this opportunity, like, hey, like if I'm going to really gonna be the only quarterback there this spring. Like I'm going to take this opportunity to really elevate my play. Right. And it's really just like a mindset, like every day I go into practice, like I'm treating this as if it's like, like it's a game, right. I'm like, I'm going out there and I'm executing. Um, I'm making throws. I'm trying to really push myself to really see the type of limits that, that I can go as a quarterback. And um, who knows, who knows what happens during the season. You never know. Um, with injuries and things like that, like you obviously never hope that anyone ever gets hurt, but that's the game of football. Um, mm-hmm. and people end up getting hurt all the time, and the next guy has to come in and step up. And you know, if I'm Joey, I take that, take this entire spring, um, even partially in the fall camp, like, hey, like this is this is my opportunity to really elevate my play. And if I do get a chance in the game, um, that I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna just completely light it up. Um, and no one's going to have any worry about me being in there as quarterback. You know, another thing I, I was uh, seeing former Hawkeye wide receiver, a walk on Jordan come and he mm-hmm. put out tape after he entered the transfer portal, obviously wasn't able to pl- didn't play this year. So you know, probably looking to transfer down to a lower level, get an opportunity, but there was a lot of film that he put out there from practices. So mm-hmm. he's going to have that too. I mean, he's going to have a, a huge yep. reel that he's going to be able to put together this spring. And if he decides Even after spring practice, you know what? I want to see what's out there. You're going to have a whole lot to show coaches that, hey, these are the throws that I can make. This is the way that I commanded the offense on and on and on. So the opportunity obviously is going to be there uh, for him. The other Mm -hmm. component, obviously, when we look at the future is the passing game's got to be better. The offensive line's got to be better. The the whole offense needs to be better. We've talked about offense coordinator. I've said my piece many times, and I'm sure we'll continue to repeat ourselves on that front. But just schematically, you know, what, what this team is, say there isn't any coaching changes. They run it back 
another year here with an upgraded quarterback, upgraded offensive line, better receivers, on and on and on. They run it back schematically. What you'd like to see out of this offense to change, to get that running game going. Yeah, better players are going to help. There's no doubt about that. Better players will make it better. But schematically, what you'd like to see Iowa do offensively next season. Yeah. Um, obviously, I want to see us push the football down the field. All right, like that's something that – has to be a priority and it can't just be like a one type of one time a game thing that where what it really seems like it's got to be you know you you dial up at least uh sh- at least one shot play at every quarter at minimum yep. right and, and possibly even more because uh when you watch teams play Iowa a lot of teams they just they say forget going too high safeties we don't need it they're not going to challenge um, us on the outside. Um, so why even bother? We might as well start creeping up that, that, uh, strong safety and let them, let them play in the box. Because if we can stop their run game, their passing game isn't sophisticated enough to the point where we feel threatened by it. And I'm not saying that we just go full on air raid or anything like that, but force these guys, force the, the DBs to actually cover and actually work instead of kind of just chilling out there and just running for their health. Um, and you got to remember that receivers, we have, we're going to have guys that are on scholarship at the receiver position as well, right? And, and they want to go out there and make plays. So getting them an opportunity to go out there and make those plays is something that needs to happen. And as well as just in general, just kind of <clears throat> getting skill guys into space, into open space. Um, because the reason why they're, offensive skill guys is because of their ability to create explosive plays and explosive plays are things that can either win you or lose you football games. And on the Iowa side of the football field, it feels like most of our explosive plays come from the run game, which is a good thing. It's not necessarily bad, but you got to be able to have some type of balance element to it and being able to do it in the past game by getting guys in space. And I'm not just talking, just throwing a screen or whatever. Um, Every now and again, like like that's got to be something that is focused on and honed on, whether it's just whether you do more bubble screens, um, you scheme it up to where guys are running option routes on uh, a mismatch and things like that nature to be able to get the ball in in players hands in space, because that's the way you're going to create explosive plays. That's the way you're going to get some of these defense to actually defenses to actually sit back a little bit more instead of creeping all, all up near the line of scrimmage and inside the box, just, um, just trying to stop the run. So uh, we'll talk more about this, certainly in the offseason, some of the changes that we hope to see. And, you know, getting that passing tree kind of updated, it just felt like, again, players are going to help. There's no doubt about that, but there needs to be more, certainly, that happens with this Iowa football team and what they're doing offensively. But we're going to take our final break here when we come back on the other side, the sports world really collided uh, yesterday, last night in Monday Night Football and, and just uh, one of the more crazy moments that we've had. And I uh, want to talk about that a little bit with you, LaShawn. Obviously, as a football player that played at a high level, we'll do that as we continue here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Trent Cotton and LaShawn Daniels back with you one final time here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Well, LaShawn, as uh, we look towards the offseason of football, basketball, tough start, 0-3. They got Indiana coming up this week, and, boy, they got to start piling up wins, and they got to do it in a hurry. Uh, we'll talk some basketball here at the end, but I want to go through a, a little bit and just talk about what we saw yesterday and last night, Monday Night Football, in the NFL. It was just an absolutely devastating time with Hamlin as he goes down. So you see DeMar Hamlin. I watched the play in fact, in replay. So I was putting the kids to bed last night. I had the phone put away, reading stories, do bath time, do all that stuff, get the kids down. And I looked down at my phone and I got 25 text messages. Well, what's going on? And I see, well, there's something in the NFL game. So I go downstairs, had the game recording down there on the DVR, knew something big. I hop on Twitter and rewinding it and just watching it, kind of at least having some circumstances behind it, knowing that something big important had happened and seeing the medical staff, the way that they reacted and how quickly everything was it was going on, it was just such a crazy moment. So I wasn't watching it live, but it was just a different way of seeing it, viewing it in that kind of prism. Uh, you told me before we went live here that you were watching that play. It just, 
I mean, the unthinkable, right? You just, yeah, you know, injuries are going to happen. You play football, right? It's, it's a part of the game that happens, but something like that, you just can't prepare for it. No, no, not, not at all. And, um, I think it, it, the people on ESPN, I think we're kind of talking about it, um, and described it, uh, relatively well last night because see, you, you've seen injuries and, um, usually when like most of the time the injuries are external, you can see it, you can feel it, right. Whether it's a broken bone, your ankle, you know, tear up your knee, get concussion, um, so on and so forth. And then you watch that play and it looks like just a regular routine play stands back up, um, falls to the ground. And you're thinking like, Oh, he didn't really, he didn't hit his head, um, until he fell on the ground. And then with the, how fast that they brought, uh, you know, like the ambulance and the stretcher out, um, let us, me from watching it from the TV, like, okay, like this is something that's much, much different than what you're, what we used to I mean, especially even this year in the NFL with, with Tua and, and the concussions, this, this football season, um, you knew it was much, much different. And see, I played a lot of football for many, many years. I've never seen anything, um, like that uh what happened last night i mean player going into cardiac arrest on um, football field is, is crazy it's mind-blowing and when I mean, you saw the reactions of the, the bills players as well as you know the Bengals players uh we knew that it was something serious and obviously a bunch of thoughts and prayers to uh tomorrow's family um to him um the bills and um their entire organization, because obviously that's a really, really tough situation and something you, you, you never really expect to happen, but thankfully that, you know, it was able to get a, such a fast medical response from um, the trainers and, you know, the hospital staff, because I see if that happened, if that were to happen when, you know, you're not on football field or when you're alone, right. You're in a much, much tougher situation. So, um, so you still think we're still waiting on a bunch of, of news and what's, what's coming out of that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really just crazy to think about. It and it's crazy to see that um, on television. Devastating moment and uh, kind of brings full circle. Yeah. We're, we're having fun here, right? We're talking Hawkeyes and we're talking about the game and they get upset about things and get fired up, but gives you that big picture perspective. And it was certainly that and hope that everything goes well. We're still waiting for more information and, a lot of speculation out there. We would definitely want to stay away from that part of it and just wait until we hear from the doctors and the family exactly more information on that front. But yeah, just a, a crazy time and something that you just you don't expect to see on the football field, but it can happen. And I remember hearing about this arrhythmia that can happen when you take a blow. I read an article, I don't know, a year or two back about kids in Little League that were getting hit by pitches and this mm -hmm. would happen. Same kind of thing mm -hmm. where it's just that blunt force to your chest at exactly that millisecond at the wrong time when your heart beats at its highest. And this is what can happen. But uh, great news that the training staff was there, the CPR that was doing, and then, and then bouncing back. You obviously never dealt with something like this, but when you saw a player, you know, go down, when you saw one of your teammates go down you, Oh boy. And that that's an ACL, you know, or, or he got dinged and that's a concussion. When that happens to one of your teammates, what, what's it like? And how, how do you pull yourself back together? How do you, you get back out there and, well, you, you're running back. I'm going to get hit again. <laughs> i got to run away from everybody every single play. Yeah, what, what is that like just getting that mentality back at, yeah, not at me at the junior high and high school level playing, but you playing at, at the Big Ten level knowing we got to go out there and we got to be ready to go again at the professional level doing that. God, it's going to be just incredibly difficult. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy, um, especially – especially when you've been around these guys for, for so long, you've been training and working together. You spend, you spend so much time around these guys, like, especially during the season, you're spending more time around uh, your teammates than you are, are your family. Like, like, like that's really how it is. And um, when you see one of them go down with, with any injury, um, anything that forces them to miss time, see you're, you're upset and you're thinking about their, their well being. like, are they going to be okay? Um, and so on and so forth. And then, now you got to reel it back in and you got to get back to playing the football game. And, um, uh, that's, that's, that's just the reality. You can't, you can't let that 
kind of weigh down on you because I see you know you know you don't you know your teammate wouldn't want that uh what's happening to them to, to weigh on you as a player and it, it it's tough to get back and, and refocus um because all on your mind you're just thinking are they okay or are they okay and then it's like after you get off the field like it's almost like like you want to ask the trainer or you want to ask whoever has information on them like are they okay what happened are they going to be all right um so it's, it's it's not easy to make that transition um even though like you, you do almost eventually kind of get numb to injuries because you see it so often but still there still is that human side of everything where you're like i still want to make sure that they're okay um and you know you just hope that that's nothing serious great perspective LaShawn, and i uh, really appreciate that well appreciate your time today LaShawn. good catching up with you again new year in front of us we're Going to have a plenty of football to talk about. We'll get into the basketball team a little bit, what's happening in front of them. So a busy time here in front of us, but thanks for hopping on. Yes, sir. Go Hawks. Today's episode of the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast, also brought to you by our friends with the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less, instant reaction, game recaps, and Lockdown's take of the day. Lockdown Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. We'll be back with you again tomorrow. LaShawn, he'll join us again next week. A lot of Hawkeye talk coming your way. An important time. They got a wide receiver out of the portal. A lot of recruiting. We'll keep you up to date on all of that. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching and listening to Lockdown Hawkeye.